the network. Wow. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Music News That Matters. We're on the first of each month. We help you sift through the noise to bring you the most important industry news. We know there's so much information out there, but we're going to focus on topics that matter most to you guys. And as always, we'll give you our perspective as well. It'll come as no surprise today that we're talking about coronavirus and the effects it's going to have on you guys and the music industry as a whole. Yeah, and of course, before we get started, since these videos only go up once a month, make sure you sign up to our newsletter and even more importantly, to get notified with the latest news of these clips and other clips, hit the notification bell. And we're also on Spotify and all other streaming platforms as well now. You can listen to us on the go in podcast format. Finally, you can listen back to a few of the other episodes and of course, any future ones as well. There we go. There we go, man. So what do we have today because obviously there's been just a lot going on i mean i actually before we even get into how the industry is being affected by corona and some of the dope things you see some companies um, doing that artists can be affected and impacted by how has corona affected your lifestyle well, I had um, supposed to be on holiday this week uh, and, and the previous week as well. So that's all been impacted, especially doing a travel around Europe. So that was obviously off the cards. Um, yeah. And then I've right. had a few other problems with, you know, living with uh, other friends who have lost their jobs and things. And it's just a quite, a, quite a serious time for everyone. Uh, yeah. Man. Uh, so in, I don't, what is it like in the UK period as far as the climate? I want, obviously I'm in the US mostly in Georgia, but I've been in LA and Atlanta back and forth throughout this particular period. Um, and over here, LA seems to be ahead of everybody, right? I watch LA yeah. for what's probably gonna happen next <laughs> or where I'm at in Atlanta, right? Just because, I mean, that's just where most of the concentration of cases I've been seeing. And I made it out in time just before they got super crazy with mm -hmm. the, uh, the airports. There was one period where they started to test a lot of um, everybody, but had them standing up and close together, right? In close quarters as they waited in line to get tested, which just seemed antithetical to the whole purpose of, of uh, all this. But, but yeah, man, they've, they've uh, shut things down pretty quickly in comparison. LA, oh, California, but I guess LA specifically and in Washington, those are the two states that seem to be getting hit the hardest. Yeah, so we're in here in London. We've been on full lockdown since last Monday, so about ten days now. Um, you can only go out like once a day, and you can go out to the only the essential shops are open for like food and things. Uh, once a day? How do they know if you went out more than one time? That's crazy. Well, there's a lot of police presence around, but I guess obviously they're just keeping an eye out in in, the, in like the public areas, like parks and stuff, to make sure we don't see people going out for more than one walk. I'm not really sure how it's quite going, but it's very very quiet everywhere around here and. I was already on lockdown the week before that because like two people in my office at work got coronavirus. So, but I got the all clear, like in terms of isolation, like last Friday. So I didn't get it luckily, but um, yeah. So it's been, been like this for, been, been in this room for a while now. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have you gone out of the house every day? You said once a day? Yeah, once a day you're allowed to, yeah, at the moment. But um, yeah, how, For how but, long? But before that, I couldn't go out anyway because I potentially had it, so I couldn't actually go out until, like, last Friday. So I've only been able okay. to go out the last few days. So, Sheesh. Is yeah. there, like, a time period on how long you can actually be out? Not that I'm aware of. It, it, it all isn't really being policed too heavily. I know there's been some more... There's been some strong words from the government recently about, you know, clamping down on it because a lot of people obviously have been, you know, taking the piss of it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, I think it might get more serious now as we, you know, cause we're getting, we're getting more and more cases like, and yesterday we had the most deaths in a day. So Whoa. Yeah. how many was, was that number? Well, you tested me now. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, okay. but I, I do know, unfortunately that yeah, like a 13 year old died from it yesterday. So it's affecting the young people as well. You know, the, you're, not, you're not invincible if you're, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. This is this thing is definitely serious. I have some people close to me that might be affected. It's not official um, due to due to mm -hmm. test. That's the crazy part about it. It's an odd time, right? Um, because it's also in line with allergy season here, and on yeah. top of that, 
pollen has been crazier than it's been in years so you don't know where why people are sneezing are you sneezing because of pollen or are you sneezing because of corona or you know and of course there's more than just sneezing but all these different types of of symptoms and anything you do right <laughs> people are like yeah, oh okay yeah. what's, what's going on you know don't look at me too much right um but th this uh is definitely an interesting time to say the least obviously it's impacted the the uh, industry um and of course as we were talking about before the call there's quite a few companies taking some interesting approaches to it which of course <laughs> which you know it can be good and bad you know d depending on how you look at things but you know capitalism always rears its ugly head here and there so yeah, what, what do you have for us today <laughs> well i thought we'd start maybe more from like an artist and independent musician perspective about what you can do because obviously i know the irony is that time is always the biggest enemy for mm. you know for artists and yet suddenly yeah. you presented with all this time to really like sort of like reevaluate and focus That's on certain things you were wanting to do so you've always been yeah. you've always wanted to get on tiktok or you've always wanted to learn a particular instrument you know now is a good time is there any to do that but at the same time you do need to you know be able to be able to live and that's the problem at the moment of a lot of musicians that statement about tiktok man not just the artists though that's everybody so i think like so tiktok is like seeing a, a rise in this period because there's been this time time where tiktok has been marketed and branded to people for a while now and they've started to see it on instagram popping up but it's just this app this is it's, it takes it's a barrier, right, to convert to something and change your behavior, especially when you're in your normal pattern. Don't have time to really get into something like that. Now, that time is there, and people yeah. are going to going ahead and creating their first TikToks. A lot of their first TikToks are actually coronavirus-related TikToks because yeah. there were some challenges that have been popping. But it's been interesting to see that rise. To your point, even with artists now having time to create, there's having there's a lot of time for people to act on not just watching certain videos, but actually act on joining platforms or other things that they didn't have the time to do so with before. It's important to say that music streaming is down and video consumption is up. So that is where you should be turning your attention to right now. Obviously it's say not down again. drastic. Music streaming is down in terms of like, you know, the rates, but video consumption is on the up. It's not drastically why, fallen. Why but... do you, why do you think that is? Well, I think a lot of people um, listen to music on their commutes, and also we're not getting that anymore. Yeah. Think, think of all the workers who, who do that. And at the same time, obviously, you're at home, you never used to get the opportunity to watch videos while you're at work normally. But now I've seen a lot of people have been had YouTube on in the background or have had Netflix on <laughs> or, or, got, or on TikTok. Yeah. That's exactly my theory, man. Outside of also the clubs and events and things of that nature, yeah. where music gets played, just the fact that so much of it gets played while people are at work. And now, hey, since my boss isn't over my shoulder, I could turn on a full blown video like that. <laughs> that yeah, that exactly. part has, has helped Netflix out more than it's helped Spotify. And also on the, um, on the music streaming platform like Front, obviously, People are looking to cut costs now, like so especially businesses. And you know, mm. music subscriptions can be one of the first things that goes because it's not essential. It's gonna be one of the first things they cut out. Right. It's not essential, but Netflix is. I mean, I don't know from a business point of view. Uh, they're gonna cut yeah, they're okay. gonna yeah, I mean from 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 people's point of view it's probably not, but yeah, from obviously you're gonna lose a lot of a lot of uh, subscriptions and you know, and business from that. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. I wonder what those numbers look like. It'll be cool to maybe check out on some of those numbers before we meet up next time. Yeah, because I, I was saying, I saw today that globally streaming is actually up again, but in the US it's been falling every week for the past like three weeks. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I have no thoughts or like even <laughs> idea on where to start why the US versus other places are having that pattern. Yeah, but got to do some deep diving. Yeah, exactly. But going back to TikTok, yeah, obviously a lot of, they're getting way, way, way more downloads now, and a lot more celebrities have been joining in the past couple of weeks, and that's what that's where all the attention is right now. Yeah. Hey, man, a, a conspiracy theorist would say TikTok started this, right? They have China ties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few, yeah, there's a few um, theories, like there's one as well, Disney Plus just launched in Europe. 
a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's another good one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, all right, so what do we have? I see that Spotify, you said um, they're making, they're helping people raise money or helping artists raise money. Because yeah, you know, you know we were talking last episode a lot about, you know, adding like a tipping feature and how yeah. that would, you know, how it could be good, but could also be really yes. bad. But, um, right. But now I've decided. My to... <laughs> Sorry, my bad. No, you're all good. Um, so they've decided to add a little fundraising option, like a, a link into your like artist profile. It's not come out yet, but it's been rolling out very soon. So the idea is that where well, you have the social media links, you'll see now like a fundraising link. So I guess you could link to your Patreon or to a cause you're supporting or a charity or another form of donation. Uh, okay. Because when I first heard that, I assumed, to be honest, that that link would still be something that Spotify had ownership of. But well, you're I'm, saying... I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know what it's going to okay. be. I assume it's going to be an external link that takes you away from the platform because Spotify aren't taking a cut of any of this. That's, that's, that's been, what they that's said? Been, yeah, that, that's been confirmed. They're not taking a cut. Mm, that's, okay. So I think it's going to take you off platform rather than inside the app. Got you. Okay, but so I'm, then that might... Hmm. That could be... I wonder if it's, if it's going to be pre-approved URLs. Is it going to be partnership? Like, hey, we're doing this with Patreon and you do it on Patreon. Because mm. then there's still some kind of, you know, way that there's benefit, right? Just, you know, just, just as a business from Spotify. Still, yeah. hey, it's, it's understandable. You're a business. You have to act as a business. So I don't, I don't fault it. But also with that in mind, if it's not through specific partnerships, it also seems that, people can use that URL. If it's just a like a URL capability, then people can use that URL for anything. You know, just yeah. make it go to their IG versus the fundraising. So I'm interested to see how that acts. Exactly. Yeah, I was thinking it might be you could either put a Patreon link or a link to your store on your website or a link to a, a cause or charity. You can do, I, guess, I think you can be, I think you'll be able to do what you like with it. Um, but mm. my biggest issue with this is that on the mobile app, you don't, you have to go into the, you click their bio to get to those social media links. And I reckon you'd have to go there to get the link as well, because there are no links or shortcuts on the actual main profile page of an mm. artist profile. So where yeah. is this link going to be? Right. True. Yeah. That, you know, the execution of it, maybe it'll be the dot that count, the, ex, the dot that counts, because mm. obviously it's hard for that to just interrupt the user behavior for people to actually click on it and see it naturally with so it'll probably be artists having to just vocally make it a thing or maybe spotify in some sense can make it a thing and announce it so then people would actively look for it yeah what what i would like is you know when you go on the profile it's got like um follow there should be like a support me button next to it maybe mm -hmm. And also, you know, where you get the new sync, you can now like do a little um, message. It says like my new single out now that comes, you know, the little uh, message that comes up above a single you can promote. Maybe they, maybe they can promote the funding through that instead, rather than just a new single announcement or album announcement. Wait, so explain that one more time. So, you know, on a profile page, you can get um, a little message that comes up saying my new single is out now, like, and it'll right. be like a promotion. Maybe you could do you know, the funding call to, call to action there mm -hmm. instead. But I think what I'd like to see is, you know, artist name, you know where it says follow, have another button next to it that says, like, support me. Got you it. click that. That's what I'd like to see, but... That, I think I can agree with your thoughts on that. I, I haven't seen any of, of Spotify's fleshed out thoughts on, on this one yet, so I'll just have to assume they haven't said anything like that yet based on what you're saying huh no it just sounds like it's my interpretation is it's going to be an ex a, like a link external link so like you know when you okay. go on to facebook twitter or instagram you know clicking it, it takes you to their profile which is in their okay. bio section of the of the app i reckon it's going to be in there has there been anybody that you like their approach in terms of the music world in response to coronavirus maybe, I, I loved maybe i loved um band camp you know, doing the day where they removed all the, you know, they removed their, their cut, their percentage. Because obviously a lot, a lot more people went on, supported all the artists on there. Artists put exclusive stuff on there, released a lot of stems and 
and merch and things. And you know, they had they had an insane amount of traffic on their site that day. How much of a cut does Bandcamp take typically? I think it might be it's at least fifteen percent. I think. Um, Off of streams or or other. I think it's you know, I think sales. it's all I think it's all sales. I think. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm now looking just to confirm. I don't want to get it wrong. Um, when this eventually loads, but yeah, I, I really like that idea of having that that Friday where they, you know, they removed all the removed the barriers essentially, and and the fans resp- and artists responded. So was, yeah, and it's simple fundraising to help support the live sector and record stores. Yeah, that's dope. I mean, I, for one, I love how simple that is, just because this. Th- these type of things, right? It's hard to do a rollout for, right? It's kind of like, look, you do, you have to do it, give people the period to benefit for, from it. And if people mm-hmm. have an education curve on making that happen, they're, it could miss, you know, miss the mark, not only from the fans being willing to support on a certain level, but even artists, even understanding the, the complete value of it and how to, it mobilize their fans to support them. Yeah, just go back to Bandcamp. So it's fifteen percent cut usually, but they waive remove that on this day, and they usually so they usually sell about forty seven thousand items. Um, they bought fans bought nearly eight hundred thousand items that day, which is like four point three million dollars worth of music and merch. Sheesh. Four point three million dollars, fifteen times our normal Friday. At the peak, fans are buying 11 items per second on this one day. Good Lord. That is beautiful. Yeah. They might want to figure out how to do something like that once a year or hour. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not that specifically. They yeah. should have said we're, we're going from 10%, I mean, for 15% to like 2%. Man, they missed the cut. <laughs> yeah. Many of the labels also gave 100% of the proceeds to the artists that day as well. So it really was a case of yeah. the whole industry coming together. Um, we had to go from 47,000 to 800,000 items in a day, $4.3 million. Yeah. That was well done. Uh, I know wow. that SoundCloud are doing a lot as well. A lot of partnerships with like Twitch and reducing the SoundCloud pro membership by 50% and things. Um, as there's so many different causes going on. It's good to see, you know, them, them all reacting and, and responding I know there's a lot of criticism for Spotify right now not doing enough. That there's a lot of calls for them to at least triple the royalty rate at the moment. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spotify is typically slow to respond to everything, it seems like. They're, they're figuring it out. There's so many stakeholders in Spotify. I think that's what makes it so difficult at times. Hmm. We should see this feature within the next couple of weeks, I'd imagine. Because they made a press release about it on 25th of March about this um, feature. So it should come out soon. You, you can, you can um, fill out this type form, form and it will like, then it'll notify you when it's going to be available. Oh. Um, I'll put a link to that in the newsletter. But, oh. So that's where they're at with that right now. We'll have to see. But it's just interesting. We were talking about tipping you know, one month ago. All this has happened since then. And now it looks like it might be getting rushed forward very quickly, but not quite in the way we imagined. Right. I think that's a happy medium right there, actually, um, for Spotify to yeah. just do that. And now they say, look, we allow you to get out there and use it this way. We don't have anything to do with what you do over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and no cut either. They did not take it. Yeah. Away. Like that, that way, they, like our hands are completely clean. Exactly. And another, another one, um, Loom have, uh, increased there they also they launched the virtual currency notes back in january which you talked about in the podcast before mm-hmm. um they're now offering 200 free notes to all users and artists like everyone everyone who joins everyone's already on there right now and a note is equivalent to slightly higher than the royalty rate on most streaming platforms so i'm not quite sure the exact like number is i guess it's like 0.004 cents i don't know something like that so 200 notes is how many dollars? Um, let me look at the... <laughs> you got to do the math. Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, the maths 
it always slows us down. If I take, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take a look at Spotify's current royalty rate because you know, I know yeah. it, we know it's slightly more than that, but so that's okay. We'll do, we'll take the higher one. So. Okay, so that would be about one point one dollars. Two hundred notes is one dollar. Yeah, got it. And um, what they what they're also doing is any notes you then buy on the app, they they're going to give you an extra. Uh, I think it's they're going to match up to, up to twenty percent of that. Mm -hmm. So say you bought yeah, if you bought a hundred notes, you'd actually have one hundred and twenty notes. Which is. I mean, it's, it's really awesome of, of them. I mean, I love what they are all, they're, I mean, because they, they've been trying to figure out ways to benefit artists, um, you know, just from the advent. Like we already talked, I had that conversation, which is really cool because now it seems like the rest of the industry is kind of catching up with what they are already do, um, doing. What I'm curious to see is, will they be the only ones who just happen to continue to do it? Or will some people, make this a permanent um, aspect of their business in some form of fashion maybe not to the extremity of hey we're going to do no cut of your sales for a day um, every year or every month or whatever that may be but if they still incorporate some version of that it would be interesting to see if these other companies or if loom ends up being the only one after all the dust settles because it's important to stress that although obviously you know it's not a lot it's only what you know one dollar but it's important to stress that you know they're a very small company they only, they only launched like last july they're only mm -hmm. on iphone in the us right now mm -hmm. um they've just got they've got a few you know some independent artists on there but they're forgoing all profits to fund this they're they're you know they're that's what they that's what they're doing right now so you have to yeah. give them full credit and it's, it's a little bit but every little helps so yeah 100 percent. and again this is it's this is more ingrained into their culture than any other other app so i'm always rooting for the, the whole mission that they have. Um, and I'm just curious to see how artists leverage, well, not actually not even only leverage and, and react to this particular statement or this moment with, with Loom, but even just the whole, the, ad, the, the app as a whole, right? Um, I, I know, of course, they don't have Android yet and Android is, still the greatest market share all you apple users i know i know you know you think <laughs> apple so much cooler but the reality is still that the vast majority of the market share is, is android although most apps usually come out first on, on apple so that might might play huge into their growth um trajectory as well so there's a lot to kind of continue to watch i want to get deeper into like the loom analysis and things like that but yeah it's it's, it's, it's dope that they that they're, you know, benefiting in their own way. I'm just happy to see these artists, not these artists, these companies actually doing something a lot faster mm. than I thought they would have. Have you, has there been any others that you've noticed that you've been quite impressed with? Uh, that I've been impressed with? Well, mm. how about not so impressed with? How about, yeah, how about we go down that route then? Well, so far as just Spotify in terms of not so impressed with. Yeah. <laughs> just, um, in just the time, but I, they're still on the clock. I don't, I'm not counting them completely out just yet. Um, I didn't, I'm, I actually haven't known about most of these when it comes to SoundCloud and Bandcamp. I didn't know about those. Mm -hmm. I forgot with what Audio Boom did. I believe they did some, not Audio Boom, Audio, what is it? I can't remember the name of that platform. Oh man. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I haven't, there, there hasn't been anybody that I've been wholly impressed with. For some reason, yep. I've missed a lot of the news of people's reaction. I've been watching more the labels specifically than the, and you know, the middleman company that kind of work in between artists and label. Yeah, because obviously, well, uh, consumers and labels. It's been interesting that there's been a lot of announcements of like last week and this week about, you know, sort of label deals and stuff. Because obviously, Tencent just bought 10% in Universal Music Group. That's now gone through oh, and been man. finalized. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say that Tencent was opportunistic and took advantage of a sale, you know, a discount. But 
you know, those those deals don't necessarily happen overnight. They were already kind of probably move, having those conversations. This just made made things move a little faster still, I imagine. They, so you said Tencent owns 10% of Universal? Yeah. They yeah. already own a percentage of other labels already, didn't they? Another, I can't uh... remember. I don't think I'm, not not of not of Warner or um, Sony, but okay. Or I maybe so. I w- I had just been hearing about the Universal thing early on, or something like that. Then possibly they own, they own a lot of they they own a lot of the Asian you know the Asian market. So. A lot of these are like equity swaps too. It seems like when you see record labels do business with these types of companies. So I wonder if. Universal has any of Tencent, maybe less of a share or something like that. But I wonder, um, because that seems to be the MO for a lot of these types of deals. That's that's clearly a move to get into the Asian market more, isn't it? To have more of a presence there. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and also just preservation, because the reality is, I've been saying for a minute, it's going to be a tech driven company that over comes like the traditional music industry those labels right Mm -hmm. those are the threat labels only really have their intellectual property and that allows them to buy time and to prevent people right from really forgetting about them and out evolving that old model that most people pretty much don't agree uh, makes sense anymore so with that being their leverage though they still can't fight what technology companies do because they don't even think the same, right? It's more about protection and profit maximization versus technology, which is like, I have to innovate, I have to innovate, I have to get into the market, I have to build, be consumer facing, think consumer first versus the the other method. So there's always this conflict where it's going to be a tech company that, you know, gets down the, get, they'll get down the field, a label will get involved, slow it down, and maybe they'll overtake it, right? And then while they're slowing down this tech company, another tech company is going to get out there. And they're like, oh, yeah. wait, where did that one come from? <laughs> right? And then in some way, form of fashion, they'll get involved. And like, that'll, there'll be that cycle just because um, of how labels think and kind of how their business is set up, unless there becomes a point where they fully accept and mold themselves into what new industry looks like, but I think being involved with companies like Tencent allows them to be more agile and more receptive to front end change. So that was just one of three big announcements from labels this week. Another one is that TikTok's now got a temporary license with the three major labels, Universal, Warner and Sony. So they've been operating without a license for like at least since last summer, at least because it ran out yeah, in last summer. You said a temporary license or an, an appointment? Yeah, te- temporary license. They've been operating without one since, I'm not quite sure how long, but um, yeah. they haven't had one, that's the bottom line, since like last spring. Yeah. So they've been, so <laughs> it's finally been smoothed over because they, they didn't want to do a deal with them because they weren't happy about the payment they were getting. They thought they were getting shafted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was smart. I, I think that it was a smart move because at the end of the day, they did with, what we tell so many artists to do, right? Like build your leverage, continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Now we're pretty much too big to fail in the music industry's eyes, or there's too much going on. There's too much impact that you're making. We have to get involved and do business with this company um, in some form or fashion. And although we would have screwed them before, they didn't take that early deal, continue their growth. Now we have leverage. You have to respect us a little bit more. So it's, it's interesting that they did that because I, I remember hearing that they didn't have a license. I didn't know that they were, I actually didn't think that they were going to have a license this soon, but that's probably just my ignorance of some of the process of, um, yeah, and, and some of the legal implications, but it was probably worth it, right? Yeah, <laughs> worth well, waiting, yeah, worth, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other one is that Warner and Spotify finally patched things up. They've signed a new deal. There's been a bit of tension between them since it all goes back to like last January when Spotify launched in India and Spotify went ahead and put Warner's catalog on there about them striking a deal. So Warner uh, took Spotify to court. It went all the way to court um, claiming that, you know, that, um, trying to get it shut down. 
and um, mm. Spotify ended up coming out on top on in that battle, even though they'd wow. yeah, even though they'd taken it without Warner's permission. So it's been a very frosty relationship since then. But now they've finally patched things up somewhat. So, so what was the patching of things? <laughs> like, what did that look like? I'm not. I'm not entirely sure, but I mean, it was a massive thing. Like, last, yeah, last January they had a real bust up because Spotify gone ahead and launched with all, with all the major catalogs in India, and Warner Chapel and Warner, you know, hadn't reached an agreement. So since then they've continued to have the catalog, but um, there were talks, you know, last spring summer that Warner were going to pull their catalog from Spotify and things. Uh, there was all this big. Um, okay. They were. They weren't on good terms, essentially. Got it. But got it. Got now it. they have reach a new agreement and sign a new deal. So got you. See, again, well again. There's that leverage that Spotify has because Yeah, exactly. Hey, it's like are you really gonna miss out on this money? <laughs> so they had they had the audacity to launch, you know, without the permission of their catalogue before. So yeah, that's how that's how strong they feel and they got away with it. So yeah. Yeah, and they probably, they, you know, I'm sure there were some calculations to that. It's not like they just, they knew that. No, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's interesting because obviously these, you know, all these three deals got announced this week. It seems very strange timing what's going on in the world to have these big announcements be finalized. Whether it's, whether it's like, you know, everyone's feeling a bit more generous and a bit of goodwill right now, I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> nah, not at all. It's everybody's it's strange, a little but... bit more scared. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's, it, it is it is strange, but yeah, that's that's yeah. all happened in, in the space of one week. So yeah. yeah, some of these things aren't worth continuing in this period. I believe I think it's more than that, and it's more protection. Yeah, at this point, yeah. like yo, you know, let's go ahead and figure this out because we have bigger fish to fry right now. Yeah. So that that's what's going on on labels front right now, um, and yeah, I guess, I guess another thing to touch upon is you know what eyes can do right now in this period we, we know we put out a few tips on yourself and Corey in the newsletter just wondered what your main thoughts were and what the most important things to focus on are right now right well number one my primary thing that i must say is actually do not get caught up in these opportunistic ideas of hey this market is doing this this market is doing that you need mm -hmm. to invest over here don't split up the money that you probably barely had to go towards your career into these things that you really don't know about. It looks good. It looks like it's cheap or yeah. you should get in now. People are saying this, people are marketing to you so they can take their money. The experts will win you who know nothing and should have been studying five to 10 years before this moment in whatever that industry is, will be a loser outside of being lucky, which is something that you can't plan for. So yeah. one, heads down continue to move forward and grow and and focus on how you can win and gain through what you're already working on in this case we hoping we hope that it's art right um your music and if you started running campaigns like there is opportunity when we talk about facebook and youtube having you know um, a lower cost because every in certain aspects and depending on what your targeting looks like that's a very real thing but Again, although you don't have to have as long as a start in terms of learning the industry, like you would have to go learn those other spaces, you still need to be going through your process of I'm going to run this ad, test this ad, optimize it. And then I can say, yo, let me go crazy and take advantage of, um, you know, lower cost of, of advertising because you don't want to scale a bad ad still that's cheap, but no, exactly. incorrectly targeted. So those are my like primary things to focus on is more like philosophical and, and mentality wise. That's first and foremost. Of course, we talk about some other things in the newsletter as well. Yeah, I'll just say take this time to sort of, you know, educate yourself a bit more rather than, you know, jumping straight into these things. Obviously, it's so tempting, you know, now you've got this time, but you also have got this time now to learn certain areas of marketing that have interested you before in the past you haven't deep dived into necessarily. Right. And obviously there's plenty of material out there, plenty of courses, plenty of videos like this one. Um, but yeah, just take, just take some time. And also you need, you need to start that balance as well of also taking some relaxation time and also reassessing your most important goals in, in life as well, um, where you're at now. And obviously financially is also a very important time. And, and there is plenty of support out there as well. There's plenty of support groups out there and plenty of like networking groups and also quite a lot of like um, COVID-19 relief funds for, 
in the music industry, if, you, if you've been touring a lot recently or your tours have been cancelled, you know, you can apply for help. There's plenty of information out there to help you with that. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Definitely take advantage of those types of programs. You've got one in the newsletter from um, Music Cares, and also I put a few links as well into other other sites as well, other funds that are also giving out financial support if you're eligible. So definitely look into that. And obviously, a lot of people right now obviously jumping on you know live streams. Um, see, obviously it's, it goes about saying you know you can you can reach new audiences now, and you can form for your you can nurture your current fans, you know, nurture those relationships, and have, have a bit of fun with it. Basically, you know, be be creative. Mm. yeah yeah the, figure out how to do that for you try to get more creative than just going live you can do the regular lives but i urge yeah. artists please be artsy creative still please be creative and figure out what to do deeper than just what everybody else is doing how can you make your life an experience yeah to totally agree with that obviously it's such a congested market with that right now it's just how can you stand out what can you do in obviously within obviously you know uh, limitations inspire creativity you know and inspiration so you know you may be stuck in your apartment but you have the opportunity to you know what what you can make you can make music you know with, with, with sounds and, and think utilities like in your house so you can be you can make use of the space and you know just and have fun with it most importantly that's what people want to see some some joy at the moment really in this time that's what they're looking for 100 so. percent hundred percent. And obviously it's a good time to write music as well right now, you know, no yeah. little distractions. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go in the studio, but you can certainly write. Yeah. 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 I mean, I know some people who are doing collabs over zoom, so that's also a thing yeah. to consider. Also, I've been seeing a lot of this, um, don't know if it's big in the U S but house party is, uh, really becoming very popular right now. Wait, what the movie? No, House Party is in the platform. Um, like you play, you, it's, like, it's like Zoom, but you play quizzes on there with your friends and stuff. It's a massive uh, platform. Uh, it's it's yeah. one of those type of um, yeah, it's not. I was wondering about one of those kind of platforms because I can't remember the one that I used to play, um, use when I was in high school, but it was one that I used to play so many cool games with people that, that you know, were either I never met before or just some people some of my friends while I was at home. So I, I'm going to check out House Party. And I hope I hope it, it, it scratches my itch. I think it's the second most downloaded app in the UK right now. Oh, wow. So it's, I haven't even checked out myself yet, but it is, yeah, it is taking off. There's, there's also some concerns about security, though. There's been a lot of coverage in the news this week Aren't about they? how safe Aren't is it. Yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah, even, even Zoom's had the problems with that as well. So and obviously a lot of yeah. people, a lot of businesses are using that at the moment. But right. Right. It's certainly a very interesting times. I didn't, I didn't think one month ago we'd be recording this type of episode. That's for sure. Obviously, mm -hmm. I know. Obviously, it's not at all. It was a big deal then, but it wasn't quite where it's like now. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it wasn't world changing just yet. No, but um, certainly it goes without saying. Everyone, just you know, stay safe and follow the you know the authorities' advice. Cool. Well, that was yet another episode of Music News That Matters. Appreciate you guys for tuning in, whether you're on Spotify or YouTube. Make sure, again, you hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of future episodes and also the other Brandman Network content. Look forward to uh, speaking with you next month, Josh. Yeah, you too, Sean. Yep, take care, everyone. Peace. It's the network. <laughs>